unto you, and peace from God our Father, and Jesus Christ his Son, our Lord. Amen. On behalf of our Archbishop, Missioner, and Diocesan, the Most Reverend Dr. Humphrey Bamishebi Ulumakaye, and our Vicar and Ashtikin, the Venerable Polaron Shorelua Agbelusi, we welcome all of you to this Trinity Sunday. We pray that God will help you and you will continually to experience the power of Trinity in your life and in all your endeavors. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed.
who was and is and is to come. I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. This is the day which the Lord has made. Call it for purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily mortify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Glory in the Chelsea. Glory be to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. And with all your strength, this is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, 
God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Hear the word of comfort our Savior Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are laden, and I will give you rest. Hear what St. Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John says. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people, meekly leaning. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbors in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have not sufficiently walked according to the mind of Christ. We have named the name of Christ, but have not departed from iniquity we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The collect, the epistle, the gradual, and the gospel. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons in one God, now and forever. Please sit back for the readings. The epistle is taken from Colossians chapter 1 beginning from the 12th verse. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom we have received we have, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that 
are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Preeminence. For it is pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. This is the word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 6, beginning at verse 45. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to Bethsaida, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Now when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. Then he saw them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea, and would have passed them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost, and cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased, and they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled, for they had not understood about the loaves, because their heart was hardened. This is the gospel of Christ. Shall we pray? Lord, Anoint my mouth to speak your word for the hearts of your people to receive word of life. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good morning, church. And let me congratulate all of us for seeing the Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday, as we know, is the first Sunday after Pentecost to celebrate the Christian doctrine of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And if you search through the scripture, you will not see where the word Trinity is written. But it is taught. When you look at Matthew 28... Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. And Jesus spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. So Jesus actually taught his disciples to go out and teach people about the Trinity. And so on a day like this, the Christian church ponder with joy and thanksgiving what the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have done to accomplish the salvation of sinful humanity. Christ paid the supreme sacrifice so that we could all be saved today. It is brought to the remembrance of how Christians should respond to the love God has shown us, praising him and giving him glory. We remember the Father as a creator, the Son as our Savior, and the Holy Spirit as our comforter, because that was what Christ promised us, that he will leave us with the comforter. So when we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 11 to 13, it appeals to us to, as believers to aim for perfection and live in peace, ending with the prayer that the grace of Christ Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all, including, and again, the commission Jesus left for believers in Matthew 28, 16 to 20. So, 
Today, Trinity Sunday is to explain to the best of man's ability the clues written in Scripture to guide us to a fuller understanding of the triune God. The Father is God from the beginning, as we see in John 1. Jesus revealed himself as equal to the Father in John 10.30. John 10, I and the Father are one. That's what that scripture says. So together they send the Holy Spirit in John 14, 26. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So when you look at the Trinity Sunday, it is one of those important dates in the Christian calendar. And I pray that God will quicken our understanding, even to understand this triumph God in the name of Jesus. Today, our theme is the supremacy of God. When you look at the word supremacy, for those who understand the English grammar, it has its root in the word supreme. And when you look at the word supreme from the Oxford Dictionary, it talks about the highest in rank or authority. So after that person, there's nobody who takes authority. So when you look at our nation, the president has the highest authority, and that's why he's the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. So the president can, with the stroke of the pen, you know, bring peace or bring war into a nation. And so when we're, talking about, when we're not talking about God, we're talking about a supreme being that controls the affairs of men. So supremacy, therefore, is a state or condition of being superior to all others in authority, power, or status. You may be a managing director in your office. Um, you have directors. So directors have levels of authority, but the managing director has the highest level in that company. And the, the, the managing director still reports to a board. So but when we look at the supremacy of God, there is nobody to contest with him. Colossians 1, 16 to 18. Colossians 1, 16 to 18. It says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. So we can see the supremacy of our God. All things were created by him and for him. So if things are being created, we cannot uncreate it because he is God. He says, let there be light, and there was light. And even when EKEDC you know, seizes power around here, the only way you can say let there be light is to put on your generator. Or if you have an inverter, then you can have light through that. But you cannot just decree that as soon as power is seized, and you say, let there be light. So everything that has been created has been created by him and for him. And, you know, we'll soon be going to the Lord's table to take the Holy Communion. And one powerful statement that we will say after the offertory is found in First Chronicles 29, verse 11 to 13. And it says... Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as heir above all. Both riches and honor come to thee of thee, and thou reigneth all over, and in thine hand is power and might. And in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. 
That is the power of this supreme being that we are talking about today. Don't forget we are talking about the supremacy of God. So, supreme, God's supremacy over the works of his hand is vividly depicted in the scripture. Inanimate matters, irrational creatures, all perform their maker's bidding. At his pleasure, the rest see divided. And his water stood as wall for his chosen people of Israel to walk through. The earth opened up a mouth, and the guilty rebels went down alive into the pit. When he so ordered the sun stood still, as was found in Joshua chapter 10, and on another occasion went backward 10 degrees on the dial of Ahaz. To exemplify his supremacy, he made the ravens, you know, mere birds, to carry food to Elijah. Iron to swim on top of the waters. Lions to be tamed when Daniel was cast into the Aden. And fire not to burn the three Hebrews when they were flung into the flames. That is the power of our God, the supremacy of God. So when we look at the supremacy of God, we can discuss it from many dimensions. But I'll just mention a few. Number one, he existed before anything else. In Genesis 1.1, it says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. So it means that God existed before the earth. So he created the heavens and the earth. And in Psalm 90 verse 2, before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from eternity to eternity, you are God. This, our God, is supreme. He created all things, number two. The first chapter of the book of Genesis gave account of how the world came into being and all the things created by God. This is further amplified in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John 1, 3. It says, all things were created through him and apart from him, nothing was created that has been created. Nothing, nothing apart from me was created. In the Colossians that we read earlier, verse 16 of it, said, because by him everything was created in heaven and on earth, and the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And number three, because he is supreme, he sustains all things. Colossians 1.17 says, He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. In him all things hold together. Hebrews 1.3 adds that Jesus is the radiance of God's glory, the exact expression of his nature, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. Number four. He can do whatever he pleases. God can do whatever he pleases. Psalm 135 verse 6. The Lord does whatever he pleases in heaven and on earth, in the seas and all the depths. There's nowhere God is not supreme. And that you talk about, you know, on earth, you talk about in the deep, you talk about in the sea, God is supreme everywhere. And number five, he rules over all things. He rules over all things. Remember the case of Nebuchadnezzar. When Nebuchadnezzar, you know, became very pompous and he was made to eat grass. Hear what Daniel 4, 34 verse to 35 says. He said, but at the end of those days, high Nebuchadnezzar looked up to heaven and my sanity returned to me. Then I praise the Most High and honor and glorify him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing 
and he does what he wants with the army of heaven and the inhabitants of the earth. There is no one who can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? The Yoruba have a saying and say that it's Oba Lakpa Dukwe. It's God who kills and you see say thank you. Praise the Lord. In our Old Testament reading of today, Isaiah 45 verses 2 and 3, God made a promise to Cyrus, whom he has given an assignment. He said, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give the, the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. You'll be wondering, why would the Bible be talking about treasures of darkness or riches of secret places? Treasures of darkness, how can there be darkness in the city of salvation of which the Lord, the Lamb, is the eternal light? The expression does not in any way mean that the treasures themselves are darkness, but that they were hidden in darkness until they were brought to light. We enjoy crude oil in our nation today. Crude oil is in the belly of the heart. So if you do not bring it out, you cannot use it. Gold is something good. If you do not bring it out from the belly of the heart, you cannot use it. And the Lord also promised that the hidden riches of secret places, and that is to literally tell us that the riches of this city, of this country, which we are stored up in secret places, will be ours in the mighty name of Jesus. So how can we make the Supreme God the center of our life? We simply need to confess it by giving our lives to him. He is the Supreme God. You cannot contest with him. You cannot contend with him. Yes, you can wrestle with him and say, God, unless you bless me, I will not let you go. That is as, as far as much as you can do. But you need to give your life. You need to give, his, you need to give your life and confess him. And that is why the Bible has made a way of escape for us. In John 3, 16 and 17, it said, God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. But now if you look at verse 17, it said, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. So God has not sent Christ to condemn you, but to do what? but the word through him so that might be saved. God wants to save this world. And that is the supreme God. He that believeth on him is not condemned. So, you know, what I said earlier, we need to confess and believe in him. So, we need, we need to confess and believe in him. But he that believeth not is condemned because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. We need to believe. Now the devil may come and be telling you, do you need to believe? I have riches. I have everything. And I will give unto you. And of course, that was also what the devil did when he went to the Garden of Eden and spoke to Eve. And what happened at the end of the day? The three of them were condemned. Will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. That was described as the fall of man. Will you want to fall again? God forbid. So what we need to do is that we need to be redeemed and be engrafted to him. In the gospel we read earlier, Mark 6, verse 50, Christ assures us to be of good cheer. When the apostles were rowing, and they were in difficulty, and he was walking towards them. They thought he was a ghost. And when he got to them, he said, they should be of good cheer. He is the one calling, and he says, be not afraid to come unto me. How do you come to him? How do you come to him? And as I close, shall we take Mark, verse 6, 54, and 55. Mark says, 54 and 55. And the scripture says, And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him. Who did they know? They knew Jesus, that Jesus had come. And ran through that whole region, round about, 
and began to carry out in bears those who were sick where they heard he was. So they heard that Jesus Christ was around. And they know, they knew that when we are Jesus is, there is work of salvation. There is work of healing. Today, the church we have heard and known how supreme our God is. And I trust that if you have not invited him into your life, you will do so today. Delay may be dangerous. The supreme, the supremacy of God. God has come not to condemn you, but to give you eternal life. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be holy and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Please join me as we affirm our faith in the world of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please kneel as we pray. Jesus shall reign forevermore. He shall reign forevermore. Jesus shall reign forevermore. Hallelujah. He shall reign forevermore. My Savior shall reign forevermore. Hallelujah. discussing on is the supremacy of God, the reign of God. And when we talk about the reign of God, it starts from ourselves. Is God reigning in my heart? Let's open Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. He said, the Lord said, in NIV, 
My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. I don't know whether you are still contending with God. The Bible said that for God so loved the world that he sent his son to come and die for us. So we're going to cry to God and surrender to him who is able to redeem us. We have to invite Christ in our lives. Begin to cry to God, Father, I surrender to you. Surrender to the, the, the kingship of God in your life. Father, come and be supreme in my life. Come and reign in my life. Come and take the place that is yours alone. Open your mouth and cry to God. If God is not running in your, in your life, then your Christianity is of no use. If God is not running in your life, then you don't have a good destination after here. God wants to reign in our lives. Ask God, Father, I don't want to continue to contend with your spirit. I am releasing my spirit to allow you to reign over my life. Cry to God, Father, reign over my life. Reign in my life. Reign in my life. Cry to God. Yesterday you reign. You reign it in my life. Today come and reign. Reign forevermore. Yesterday. Joyful joy, for will this meeting be? Oh, when from sin our hearts are pure and free, and we shall gather, Savior, with thee in our eternal. Father, this is our cry, that our hearts will be joyful, that you will reign over our lives, that our hearts will be purged from sin, that our heart will be free from iniquities, that we will be with you, that you will be the Lord of our soul, that you will come and reign in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We're going to ask God to reign over everything that pertains to us. We're going to read uh, Mark, Mark chapter 6, verse 48. Mark 6, verse 48. The Bible was talking about the wind. The Bible said that the wind was against the disciples. Mark 6, 48. The winds were against the disciples. Then, for the wind was contrary unto them. Can we see verse 51 as well? In verse 51, the Bible says that Jesus Christ spoke to the wind and the wind ceased. So we are going to cry to God, Father, let every wind blowing against me cease in Jesus' name. I don't know the wind that is blowing against you. The Bible made us to know that God is supreme. God reigns over all. Every evil wind, every wind blowing against me that is, that is limiting my movement, that is retarding my motion, that is setting me back, that is drawing me back, every evil wind, that has been orchestrated by the enemy that is pushing me backward. Today, 
you, you will cease in the name of Jesus. Cease in my life every evil wind over my business, over my family, over my children. Let it cease. Cry to God every evil wind, every evil wind. It doesn't matter the direction it's coming from. We don't care how forceful it is. Whether you want, let it be spiritual hurricane. We don't care. We command you to cease. Cease every evil wind. Cease in the name of Jesus. Pray, pray. Let every evil wind cease. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's open Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. The Bible said that for by him we are all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him. If we open it in uh, NIV, the Bible made us to know that God is supreme. You know, he, everything is under him. Is under his subject. So we are going to cry to God. Because our the church of God is under God. So we are going to cry to God over the church. Father, reign over your church. Cry to God. Reign over your church. Bible said that I will build my church. That's the, the word of God from Jesus. That he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Cry to God, Father, reign over your church. Reign over your church. Reign o- let your spirit lead your church. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray that your spirit will lead your people. That you will reign over the affairs of your people. That the enemy will not hijack the church. The enemy will not hijack the church. The evil and the, the abomination that causes the, the solution will not overcome the church of God. Father, be supreme over your church. Lead us in the name of Jesus, we pray. Psalm chapter 2, verse 2. Psalm 2, verse 2. The kings of the earth, of the earth, take their stand and rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed. We are going to pray to God, Father, no gathering against your church will prosper. In the name of Jesus, the Bible said that they gathered against the Lord and against his anointed. Father, let every gathering against your people, let this scatter. In the name of Jesus, the Bible said that they will gather in one way. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, in seven ways they will be scattered. Let every gathering against the Lord and his anointed, let this scatter in the name of Jesus. People of God, pray to God. Cry to God that every gathering that is not of God, against God in this nation, against God in our lives, against the church of God, let that gathering not prosper. Let that gathering not, not, not stand in the name of Jesus. The word of God said it will not stand. It will not stand. Every gathering against the church of God, Lord, let it be thwarted in Jesus mighty name we pray amen we're going to also pray for ourselves no gathering against me shall prosper in the name of jesus the lord is king over my life the lord is king over my family the lord is king over my endeavors over my businesses over my career over my ministry committed to god father no gathering will work against me Father, no gathering against me shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, my career will not be cut short. My business will not sink. My, my, my children will not be wayward. No gathering, no gathering will succeed against the Lord. No gathering. Cry to God, declare it. No gathering. The, 
the, the enemy they have gathered against the Lord and his anointed. It will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Join me in this song. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power. Lord, the Bible made us to know that the greatness, the glory, the splendor, the majesty, everything belongs to God. It doesn't belong to any man. So we're going to pray over Nigeria. Father, you are greatness over Nigeria, we will see. Pray to God that, Lord, over Nigeria, yours is the greatness over Nigeria. Yours is the power over Nigeria. Yours is the splendor over Nigeria. Yours is the, the, the majesty. The proud man will not dictate what happens in Nigeria. The, uh, the ungodly will not dictate what is happening in Nigeria. They don't have that power. Bible said that the, yours is the, is the power. That's what Bible said in, in the First Chronicle 29 verse 11. Yours is the power. Power belongs to God. It doesn't belong to any man. It doesn't belong to any group. It doesn't belong to any set. It belongs to God. Father, we declare over Nigeria, yours is the power. We declare over Nigeria, yours is the splendor. We declare over this nation, yours is the majesty. Lord, you will reign over this country in the name of Jesus. The, the voices of the arrogant people, Lord, they will not reign in the name of Jesus because you made us to know that you resist the proud. Father, resist every proud voices over this country. Every proud voices over this nation. You will resist them in the name of Jesus. Because yours is the greatness. Yours is the power. Yours is the majesty. Yours is the splendor. Lord, you will reign over this nation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Psalms chapter 2 verse 6. Psalm 2 verse 6. The Bible said, I, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. So we're going to pray for the 2022 ele 23 election. Father, prevail over our elections in the name of Jesus. Install your king. Install your king. Father, let the, your mind, let the person after your heart, let it you be the president. Install your, let your way prevail over this nation in the name of Jesus. Let your way prevail. Your way will prevail, not the will of any man. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, thank you for this opportunity to cry unto you. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you continue to be our help and shield in the name of Jesus. We will keep trusting in you in the name of Jesus. Father, you will remember your people and you will bless us in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will bless everything that we lay our hands on in the name of Jesus. You will bless this week for us in the name of Jesus. Our children are blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, we will live, we will not die in the name of Jesus. Because the dead do not praise you. They don't praise you. We will not go down the pit this week in the name of Jesus. Your glory will enclose us. Your glory will shield us. Your glory will go with us in this week in the name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of the days, 
In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let's share the grace together. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of praise. Offertory him. Please, you'll be guided by the guild as you drop your offertory. And please pick a copy or a piece of the Nigerian flag. Don't miss it because you will need it later on. If you don't get it, just signify it to the guild. Thank you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given, and human hands have made, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Together, yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him, you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him, you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. O oh Lord our God, we pray this morning that you give us the grace to surrender our lives to you so that your purposes for us be made manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Please kneel. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son and Savior Jesus Christ. As we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his suffering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him, our great high priest, this is our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love. And unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you on earth and in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? The cup which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Together, we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith, with thanksgiving. The table is set. Communicants on the Anglican order and other churches in communion with Anglican church are welcome to this table. Others should sing and pray along and endeavor to see one of the priests after the service.
as the guild of stewards will direct us and also his voices will lead us at the singing of the ablution here we will give our tithes for those who are here with their tithes and offering and all others that you want to give to honor the Lord. May the Lord honor you even as you give generously unto him in Jesus' name.
Father and our God, we are grateful to you because we know that you are great. You are supreme and you are God of all times and seasons. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your provisions. We thank you for your love towards us. We thank you for your generous benevolence. Lord, receive all thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. In obedience to your word that we should not appear before you empty-handed, we have brought these tokens. Father, we pray you will accept and use for the furtherance of your work in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as you accept our offering, may we not lose our rewards in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let it be that this seed that we have sown, may they bring abundant harvest over our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we have given in our places of work, we ask that you promote us in the name of Jesus. In our businesses, we pray you will enlarge our course in the name of Jesus. Lord, may your children not lack resources to continue to live in the mighty name of Jesus. There are those who would have loved to give, but they did not have. Ancient of days, we pray that this day, this trinity, Lord, you will open their heavens in the name of Jesus. Father, when we shall return again, let it be that we all have testimonies of divine provisions, and your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty, wonderful, and dependable name, we pray. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, the Lord be with you. Let us kneel. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for there is the kingdom. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and walk to your praise and glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh -uh, what kind of hallelujah was that? Shout hallelujah now. Hallelujah. You know, hallelujah for us in all shows is never an interlude. Could you turn to someone beside you and say, it is not an interlude? Say it again. Say, it is not an interlude. It is to praise the Lord. <laughs> Can you now look into the face of that person and say, shout hallelujah. And what is the response to shout hallelujah? Put your hands together for Jesus. How many of you believe in Project Nigeria? Raise up your hand. How many of you believe in Project Nigeria? Raise up your hand. You believe in Project Nigeria? Raise up your hand. Raise up your flags. Thank you. And then stand. Let us pray for Nigeria. Please rise. And let's just offer simple prayers for Nigeria. Simple prayers for Nigeria. I believe. Okay, you see, you see. 
maybe you don't know where you stand. If you eat food in Nigeria, wave your flag. If the air that you enjoy eh, eh, is the one that God decided to pull over Nigeria, wave your flag. Okay. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7. Can we read it together? But slowly. Of the increase of his government. Whose government? Whose government? And peace. There are what? What happens to the increase of his government? No end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even till when? Till when? Now look at this very well. What happens? The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Can you say it again? The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. You know, the simple prayer I want to offer, and I want you to join me to offer, is that that which the zeal of the Lord can do should be established. You see, this prophecy was written many years ago, thousands of years, but it did not fail because the zeal of the Lord, the commander of the armies of heaven and earth, he said, will perform this. That which the zeal of the Lord can perform is what I want you to pray for in Nigeria. So, you're going to join me. You see, there are distractions at the top. For those of you who are CEOs, there are distractions. And when there are distractions, people that are distracting, it's not because they love you. It's because of vested interest. So you're going to pray that that person that we operate only under the zeal of the Lord of hosts, that will not submit to distractions of men whatsoever, the Lord will make it, make the person to reign in Nigeria. Raise your flag and say with me, Great are you, Lord, greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Can you sing, Father? Can you sing, Great are you, Lord? Oh, yes, greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Oh, yes, Father. with me in the name of Jesus are you afraid to call Jesus say in the name of Jesus Lord we pray let your zeal put in position the man the woman that will be deaf to distractions of men but will listen to your will concerning Nigeria. Can you open your mouth and pray? The Lord, that which only your zeal can perform. That man that you are prepared. That man that uh, you are prepared. That will listen, that will operate under the zeal of the Lord. Lord grant unto us. And that which only your zeal can perform. Let it be established in Nigeria. That which only your zeal can perform. Let it be established in Nigeria. Let it be established in our land in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You shall live to enjoy the results of this prayer. You didn't hear me. I say, you will live to enjoy the results of this prayer. 
in the name of Jesus. Do something for Jesus. We invite very quickly for Thanksgiving, my brother, Olumide, and the wife, Simi, and the family, as they come for Thanksgiving after the birth of the miracle baby. Also, his voices will lead us, and friends and families will join as they give thanks to God. <laughs> mercy and grace upon this family for his grace and the blessing of this newborn. We now thank God for his mercies as we invite the mother to say Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to, for he gives to his beloved sleep. 
Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame. When he speaks, his enemies in the gates. Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. It was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Sing with me, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you all the glory. heaven and the earth, the giver of all good gifts, we are before you today on the invitation of your son, Olumide, and your daughter, Simi, to thank you because you have shown them mercy, to thank you because you have been faithful to them. We are grateful if you have millions of tongues, it will not be sufficient to express our feeling to you this morning. Lord, we ask that you accept our gratitude. Amen. If these people can say a louder amen, please, Lord, accept our thanksgiving. Amen. Lord, we pray that as they have come before you in appreciation that you have released this bundle of joy to them. I don't know how many more they want to have, but God, beyond their imagination, you release unto them. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, as they have come before you with joy dancing, in appreciation of your gift unto them, I pray, Lord, that their joy will not be cut short. Amen. Oh, the joy of your parents over you will not be cut short. Amen. The glory of the Lord will never depart from your lives. Surely God's goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You have always enjoyed God's favor. I pray for you. The help of God will never be cut off from you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In all your doings, you will enjoy divine, divine strength in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. We pray for your daughter. You have helped her in carrying the baby for nine months. It was by your grace. We ask that you continue to renew her. Amen. Together with her husband, your blessing and your grace will rest upon them. Amen. This child will grow in wisdom and in favor. Amen. Nothing will cost us your life. Amen. Every milestone shall be easy for you. Amen. I say it shall be easy for you. Amen. You will not struggle for survival. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. All of you, you have come to share in today's joy. Your joy is on the way. Amen. You will end this year with shout of victory. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Grandparents, we pray for you. Your eyes will continue to behold the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Koso babire, kosi babire, koma sola lubire, igwe, igwe. Koso babire, kosi babire, koma sola lubire, igwe, igwe. Come on. 
Hill. We believe in Project Nigeria because of our children. And we thank God for all that he has been to our daughters in particular. For the ministry of women and girls, especially for our ladies and our daughters, they were coming forward for Thanksgiving. Please support them in any way you can. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. Very briefly, girls and ladies. All the days of my life I pray. Everything I have, now you get to be my heart. thank you for your daughters before you today. We thank you for the ministry of ladies and girls in also church. And we pray that your blessings will rest upon your children in the name of Jesus. Your glory will rest upon them. Their future is guaranteed. You will bless them with wisdom. In all that they do, Father, we pray that they will not fail. Their dreams will not be shattered. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Beyond our imaginations, they will be great. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I don't know what's in our do. We make it love the soul. I don't know what's in our be. We make it love the soul. That is the why. That is the why. That is the why. That is the why. to the Lord. We thank God for his mercy and his grace and we welcome you to church this beautiful Sunday morning and we thank God for his many blessings upon our lives. We pray that his glory will never depart from our lives in Jesus' name. I don't know how ready you are for the mid-year praise and thanksgiving, but I want to announce to you that also his voices is ready. Frank Edwards is ready. And a host of others. 26th June is the last Sunday of this month. At 7.30 and at 10 a.m. You know what? No sermon on that day. Are you happy that there is no sermon? Nothing but to praise the Lord. 
Nothing but to worship the Lord. Nothing but to give glory to his name. If you have not seen that kind of service before in the Icon Church, this is the place to be. And we welcome you. And we pray that the Lord will glorify himself in our lives in the name of Jesus. If you don't know this secret, let me let it out. He dwells in the praises of his people. God dwells where? Praises of his people. And I pray that you will accept our praises in Jesus' name. I'd like to welcome those who are worshiping God along with us for the first time. If today is your first day, please stand as we welcome you especially. Those who are worshiping God along with us for the first more time. More than gold, more than gold. You are something more. and we know the Lord has blessed you and the blessings you have received will be permanent in the name of Jesus. See, we have some chairs arranged just for you. After this service, outside the door to my left, those chairs are meant just for you, not for any other person and just for just a few seconds and the Lord will bless you as you wait in Jesus' name. The celebrants of the week, those born between today and Saturday, please stand as we rejoice with you. Celebrants of the week. Happy birthday to you. greater grace in the name of Jesus. Nothing will cut short your life. Nothing will cut short your dreams in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not hear any bad news concerning you in Jesus' name. Can you turn to someone say next Sunday is Father's Day? And what did that person say? Say, I just want to remind you. Uh -uh. I, I, I think you should be intentional. Say, I just want to remind you that next Sunday... It's the Father's Day. You know what? There are many Mother's Days. But next Sunday, I have not asked you to stop talking. Say, next Sunday is the Father's Day. And I'm happy to be a father. Now turn to any man around you. Say, you are a big man. Uh -uh. Turn to another person beside you. Say, you are a great man. You know why I say you are a big and great man? Something has been prepared for you this coming Saturday. Something has been prepared for you this coming Saturday by the joint groups of men's fellowship, the Davis Men's Fellowship, Gideon's Men's Fellowship, Joseph Men's Fellowship, Joseph Taiwo Taiwo, um, and others, the leaders, Emeka, SAN, and others. They have pulled all of these two together for men. Can you turn to someone beside you say, for men only? Amen. Say it again, say, for men only. Amen. I, I don't think women are jealous. Mama, are you jealous? Amen. Can you say it again, say, for men only? Amen. You see, after all these things, if you don't send your husband to this program, I will fight with you. 
talk to another woman beside you. Say, after all these things, if you don't send your husband, this thing is to women now, if you don't send your husband to this program, Vika will fight you. On Saturday, it's a special day for our fathers. Then we will come together for Thanksgiving and other things on Sunday. Saturday at 9 a.m. to 12. Please join us. Uh, there are so many of you. I don't want to begin to mention names. But I would like to see you. Join us. Let's talk about women. I know that will interest you. We talk about worship. We talk about Anglicanism. We talk about anything you want to talk about. Let's talk about them. Let's talk about them. And the Lord will guide us. And the Lord will help us. In the name of Jesus. Put yourself, put your hands together again for mothers. No online. Why did I say you should clap for mothers? Because they will assist our fathers to get up on time. <laughs> so that they will assist our fathers to be ready for it. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. No online or in person. All of us will be here. I want to congratulate our mothers, uh, led by Mama Yad, out of all the archdeaconries in the entire diocese of Lagos. They came first, they emerged first. <laughs> for the Bible study competition. And we thank God for his mercy and his grace. The Lord will continue to bless you. Together with the team of the <laughs> examiners, Mrs. Jane Osadolo and others, we are proud of you. This was not a local competition, a national competition. And they really tried. Uh, we pray it will always be well with you in Jesus' name. For 60 seconds, there is another thing that is important. I want to invite the president of Young Professionals Fellowship, uh, Mr. Debo Eboda. What did I say? 60 seconds. Your time starts now. Put your hands together for him as he comes forward with his team. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. Mr. Debo, 60 seconds. Lawyers don't talk much except in court. Praise, the, praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, we have so many lawyers and we have so many, at least we have two sons, even in the YPF. Praise the Lord. Screen Master, can you help us? So uh, briefly, we, in preparation, this is going to be a very wonderful weekend and it's going to start from Friday night. Uh, and uh, so on Friday night, we're having the first of its kind, the maiden edition. Thank you, Screen Master. And if you look at the screen, you see what's going to happen. It's the YPF Friday Hangout. And it's essentially, according to the Dow season, if you are between the ages 20 to 55, then you are young. You are, they didn't call it youth. They say, um, the Dow season says we are the youth, I mean, we are the young professionals. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the whole essence is this. We're growing in, in leaps and bounds. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Olumide Shombo. I was just going to call your name, Olumide. Um, he's promised us that he's going to be there. He's a great supporter of uh, the fellowship. And, the, and the, earth, the whole essence is this. We don't want you to be sitting beside the answer to your prayers and you're still praying to God. Tell your neighbor, the person sitting beside you, say, tell, talk, tell to your neighbor and say, the person sitting beside you <laughs> might be the answer to your prayer points. Might be the answer to your prayer points. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Yes, and, and we've, we've had so many of such instances where people are looking for one person or the other, and the person um, that knows them is right there in their midst. So on Friday, the whole essence is this. We want you all to come out on Friday. We want you to come in your business casual. Um, we're gonna, we cannot serve cocktails, so we'll serve mocktails, so without um, alcohol. And it's going to be in the church premises. Finger Foods, we've got the best event planners in YPF. And they're going to give us, uh, they're going to organize for the best of the finger foods. And we want to network. 
because enough of going to meet Vicar for those that want job. There was a day I added a director to the, to the group. And I said, please welcome this person. And nobody welcomed me. I said, yeah. <laughs> and a few days before then, three people came to meet me that they are looking for jobs. So we look forward to seeing everybody. For the elderly ones, you are also invited because you can also come mentor people. Yes, you can come mentor people. And who knows? Uh, Vicar says it is uh, the year of connecting. Um, there was a day, if, uh, there was a Saturday morning that I got a call from a friend. And that was in 2004. I was sleeping. I just come back from work. I said, come, 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 come. I said, oh, I'm not coming. Come, come. Long story short, the wife called me. I went. Um, it's all history. I met my wife there. So see you on Friday. And God bless you all in Jesus' name. The story continues on Friday. <laughs> Friday night. Friday night. You are welcome. Head of service, you are welcome. You are welcome not only today, also Friday night. Eh? In Jesus' name. Bro, buddy, you are welcome. I know it's not your church, but you are welcome. And very many of our visitors, uh, we welcome you. Uh, it's an open church for all of you. And we pray that the Lord will continue to bless and honor you in Jesus' name. Our Young Professionals Harvest is first Sunday in July. Please take note. And um, we thank God for very many things that God has been doing in our church and in our midst. Evangelical um, uh, ministry, we're having their meeting at the chapel after the service. And for two minutes, Mamaya will see all our mothers in preparation for Father's Day. Ah, this Father's Day will be powerful. Eh? The only one that we're going to have. I'm looking forward to it. Oh. And I pray that the Lord will continue to bless and honor you in Jesus' name. As we go into this new week, I pray for you. The zeal of the Lord will make that breakthrough to come to you. Listen, he does whatever pleases him. Nothing can stand in his way. The zeal of the Lord will make it happen. The zeal of the Lord has settled it. The zeal of the Lord will make that healing to flow unto you. In the name of Jesus. The zeal of the Lord will enable you to meet that target. In the mighty name of Jesus. The zeal of the Lord will empower you. Empower you to deliver on your targets. And the glory of the Lord will not depart from your life. Please stand as we take our song for the year. One verse. I have a joy like a river, joy in my soul. for Jesus. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
All Souls Church, Lekki. Our parish is one of the churches in the Anglican Diocese of Lagos. We exist to glorify God, edify believers, and multiply disciples for our Lord Jesus Christ. Led by our diocesan commissioner and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we stand on a mandate with fivefold ministries, namely priestly, pastoral, prophetic, prayer and praise ministries join us to worship and honor god as he nourishes and refreshes us <laughs>